Hey man, well, it's good to be back on the radio again today. We certainly do appreciate the good Lord allowing us to be able to come to you by means of radio. Once again, this is the Barrytrail Baptist Church broadcast, and we certainly are privileged to be the pastor there, Brother Tim Kronz. And we are very grateful for this opportunity. I pray the Lord to help us to be a blessing and to help to you today. With the help of the Lord, we're going to finish out Psalm 21 today. We started in Psalm 21 a few weeks ago, and we've been talking about pretty much just one thing, and that's thanksgiving for past victories. Uh, we talked about several things under that heading in verses 1 through 7. And today, with the Lord's help, we'll finish in verses 8 through 13. We'll talk about two different things. We'll talk about expectation of future victories, and we'll also talk about praise for the victor. And so there's been some past victories. Thank God for that. There was past victories in David's life. And I am glad that there's past victories in our life as well. We're going to pray before we read the psalm today. And then we'll read the entirety of the psalm. Uh, we'll need to read the first seven verses so we can get some of the context for verses 8 through 13. And then we'll share the, some concluding thoughts with you today from this psalm. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for loving us. We thank you for this effectual open door. I pray you would help us today to be a blessing to you. Use us, Lord, to say something uh, that will be a help and a blessing to your people. Encourage them in their walk with Christ, their service of the Lord. And Lord, please use us to say something uh, to bring it honor and glory to your name. I sure need your help. I pray that you would help us. We'll thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 21, the Bible says, The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation how greatly shall he rejoice. Now, once again, just in case someone different or new listening today, the king is David. He is writing this psalm in the third person. Verse number two says, Thou hast given him his heart's desire, and hast not withholding the request of his lips. For thou preventest him. The word preventest there means to go before. Amen. Pre the event. To go before. For thou preventest, or goes before him with the blessings of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold upon his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him, even length of days forever and ever. So the Lord gave the king eternal life. What a blessing. Verse number five, his glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. What a blessing to see that the Lord has laid honor and majesty upon the King David. Uh, he has also laid honor and majesty upon you and I who are his children by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. Verse 7. For the king, that's David, trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High, that's Jesus Christ, our God, the Lord, he shall not be moved. I'm glad that through the mercy of the Most High, the mercy of our great God, the king shall not be moved, and neither shall you and I. Now things take a turn. Verse number 8 is one reason I wanted to read all this together. Verse number 8 says, Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their fruit shalt thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended evil against thee, they imagined a mischievous device, which they are not able to perform. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back, when thou shalt make them ready, when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. Now this psalm takes a negative turn here in verse number eight. Not for the believer, but it takes a negative turn for the enemies of God here in verse number eight. However, the past victories are a promise to you and I who believe. Verse number eight, the Bible said, Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Listen, if you are an enemy of God, rest assured that you will be found out. You may be an enemy of God and you can't see any 
repercussions from that. You can't see any damage from that in your life as of now. But rest assured, friend, if you're an enemy of God, you will be found out. The Bible tells us here, the right hand, thy right hand shall find out those. So the right hand of God, which is representative of the hand of strength, shall find out all of those that hate him. You'll not be able to hide behind your religion. You'll not be able to hide behind your water baptism. You'll not be able to hide behind your uh, church membership or your good works or your good deeds. If you have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ as the only way of salvation, you will be found out. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, begin reading in verse 21, the Bible says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So the Bible tells us there, there will be those who appear before the Lord Jesus Christ, and they'll brag about all the things that they have done in the name of the Lord, and he'll say, I've never known you. So this is not a case of where he had known them, and they have lost their salvation, after doing many good works. No, this is that he never knew them. And so there is a group of people. They're enemies to God. They're against God. But one day, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to find out those who are his enemy. Now, I want to say this. There are many, there are many folks who claim to be the friends of God. They, are, they claim to be a friend of God's word. However, they are they claim to be a friend of God while de, while the whole time denying God's word. Now, it's impossible to be a friend of God and not to be a friend of God's word. We're living in a time when there are many folks who let's see how we can put this. There are many folks who they they seem very religious and they are probably even very sincere. Lots of times they're even more sincere than we are. And yet the, the Jesus that they profess to worship and to serve is not the Jesus of the Bible. It is a Jesus that they themselves have made up or a Jesus that someone else has made up and presented to them, and they have accepted that Jesus. Friend, the Jesus of the Bible is a far different Jesus that the mainstream religions are portraying to people in the day that we live in. And to know that Jesus and to know that God of the Bible, we have to know that through the word of God. Now, if you deny God's word or if you reject God's word, you are in fact an enemy of God and you will be found out. The Bible says, the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 15, verse number six, here's that right hand again. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. So the right hand of the Lord has found out his enemies before, and he's dashed them in pieces. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse number 9, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repayeth them that hate him to their face. To destroy them, he will not be slack to him that hateth him. Now notice this phrase, he will repay him to his face. So in the past, we see that he hath dashed in pieces his enemies. There's coming a time when he will repay his enemies to their face. Now, you may think that you're doing pretty good right now. You may think you're getting a by with your mockery of God. You may think that you're getting by with your vile remarks towards the word of God and the people of God. And But one of these days, you're going to meet him face to face. And when you meet him face to face, I promise you things are going to be different. You just think about all the times in your life that you've wanted to say something to somebody that maybe they had done you wrong or maybe... You had uh, witnessed something in their in their life that you didn't like or agree with, and you really wanted to give them a piece of your mind. You really wanted to get go right up to them and tell them exactly what you thought 
about what they had done or what they had said, but you didn't have the guts to do that. So you told a hundred other people, but you never told them. But one of these days, one of these days, all of that mockery that you've made of God and all those things that you've said against God and all those things that you've directed toward the people of God and all those things that you have mocked and scorned about concerning the word of God, you're going to stand in his face. He is going to stand in your face. He will repay you to your face for what you've done to him. Amen. The eternal God, who many in this world have cursed, they have mocked, they've reviled, they've blasphemed. You will repay, he will repay you to your face for rejecting his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, on that day. You say, well, I said, well preacher, you've taken it a little too far. I, I don't hate God. I just don't believe in God. Listen, you're either for God or you're against God. There's, there's no middle ground. There's no fence to straddle, man. You're either on the winning side, which means you are in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus is in you, or you are an enemy of God. And I would encourage you right now to put your faith and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Because if you don't, I promise you, ultimately, you're going to be the big loser. And that loss is going to be for all eternity. It's not going to be that someone else is going to win next season. It's not going to be that you're going to have a, another chance next season. No, you're going to be a big loser for eternity. Amen. Now, Psalm 21, verse number nine. Look at verse number nine. Thou shalt make them, talking about the enemies of God, as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Now, why do some folks refuse to believe in the God of the Bible? They, there's a lot of folks who believe in God, but they don't believe in the God of the Bible. I think one of the reasons for that is the our God, the God of the Bible, is a God who sometimes gets angry and lashes out in wrath. Now, they like a God who's all cuddly, and they like a God who is all loving and all caring and all giving and all merciful and all long-suffering. And we love that thing. We love all of those things about God as well. But our God is a just God. Our God is a righteous God. Our God is a holy God. And, and his righteousness and his justice and his holiness requires him at times to be angry about things. And the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse number 7, talking about this flaming fiery man. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 7, and to you, who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. So listen, there are some who have already had their bodies destroyed by fire long before they ever made it to the flames of hell. Uh, we know that there was fire on earth that burnt some souls here uh, during Sodom and Gomorrah. They were burned with fire and brimstone, the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis. Uh, so in, in the past, God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone right now, right now at this very minute, at this very hour on this very day, there are literally millions of people in the sut walls of hell and they are suffering in the flames of fire. And listen, friend, in the future, in the future, there will be billions suffering throughout all eternity in the lake of fire because they knew not God. It won't be because of this sin or that sin or, or another sin. We're all sinners. It'll be because they refuse to put the Lord, their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins. Many of those people who are going to be in the eternal flames of, of the lake of fire are going to be good moral people, oftentimes living a better life than many of those who have eternal life granted to them by the Lord Jesus Christ. They, they've done many good works. They've helped many people. They've, they was a good moral person. They were a good, decent person. But listen, friend, the fact that you refuse 
To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation dooms you to an eternity separated from God in the lake of fire. Now, contrary to popular opinion, and that, that is contrary especially to many of the religious society or religious opinion, if you will, religious folks, God is at certain times and in certain situations an angry God. So the Bible says in Psalm chapter 7, or Psalm 7, I should say, not a chapter, but Psalm 7, verse 11, God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. Listen, I'll say that again. God judgeth the righteous and God is angry with the weak, wicked every day. Now listen, if your lifestyle is one of wickedness, and we're not going to turn this into a study on wickedness, but we could, and we would have reason to, but if your lifestyle is one of wickedness, if that is the case, God is angry with you right now. He's not going to be angry with you. He's angry with you already. If, you're, if your lifestyle is one of wickedness, and listen, God has the ability to do something that you and I, we really struggle with, but God has the ability to do this all the time. And that is Ephesians 4, 6 says that we are to be angry and sin not. And there are some things that you and I as individuals, we ought to be angry about. Amen. In fact, if you, you're not much of a man, if there's not some things going on in this world right now that makes you angry, you're not much of a woman if there are not some things that are going on in this world right now that does not make you angry. But the Bible says that we are to be angry and sin not. Now, our God is a just God. He's a holy God. And he possesses the ability to dispense wrath, to dispense judgment, and to dispense punishment and he has the ability to do that in anger while remaining completely sinless. You know why? He's never falsely accused anyone. He's never punished anyone for someone else's crime or sin. He has never one time treated one individual unjustly. He is a just God. Now, don't allow this world's religious crowd to fool you and to believe in that there's no fiery punishment. I know what the religious crowds of this world say. Well, you know, if God was such a great God, and if God was such a loving God, and if God was such a caring God, and if God was such a gracious God, God wouldn't send anyone to hell. You're right, friend. God's not sending anyone to hell. The Lord Jesus Christ has made it possible that everyone could be saved. Now, I also realize that there's a doctrine going around there, a very wicked. Let me, let me go on record saying this real loud and real plain. There is a very wicked doctrine out there that says that, that the Lord Jesus Christ only died for a select few and only a certain group can be saved. And I want to tell you, that is an unjust God. And our God is not an unjust God. Our God has made it possible that every single individual can trust the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation and they can be saved. And so this, this crowd that tries to get you to believe that there is no fiery punishment for hell, that there is a literal burning hell. Listen, and the, and the hell that we're talking about is, is overcrowded. In fact, I believe the, the book of Isaiah talks about these uh, earthquakes and volcanoes and all those things. I, I think hell is enlarging itself to make room for the people who are going to hell daily. I believe I can't remember what the last stat that I read was. One person dies every 60 seconds or something like that. It may be less than that. And, and the majority of them, the majority of them do not know Jesus Christ as their personal savior. But God is a just God and a righteous God because he's given every man an opportunity to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior. And just because you don't see that. And just because you don't understand that, and just because you can't grasp that, don't bring God down to your level thinking that his understanding and his knowledge is as small as yours. His, weapon, his wisdom is infinite, ma'am. And I promise you that God is a just God and he has given every man an opportunity to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you reject him, there is a punishment for that rejection, amen. And so don't allow this religious crowd to tell you that, you know, if God was caring and loving and kind and all that, that 
there, there's no way there could be a hell. There's no way there could be a punishment because God wouldn't send you there. God's not going to send you there. You're going to send yourself there because you refused the sacrifice of God's son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He made it possible for you to be saved. And all you had to do was put your faith and your trust in the sacrifice that he made for you and you could be saved. You would, you would escape this place called hell and this place called the lake of fire. But our God is a righteous God and he judges the wicked. Amen. Look at verse 10. Verse 10. We're still in Psalm 21. Their fruit shalt thou destroy from the earth and their seed from among the children of men. So listen, judgment is coming and there is nothing you can do to stop it or prevent it. You may not care for judgment. You may not like judgment. The fact that you do not believe in the judgment of God, whatever the case may be. Listen, there's a whole lot of things you don't believe in that's true. And just because you don't believe there's a hell doesn't doesn't in one way, form or fashion diminish the reality of it. Just because you don't believe that God is a God of judgment does not diminish the truth of it. Just because that you don't believe God will cast you into hell because you died without receiving him as your savior doesn't mean that it isn't so. Amen. And so God is willing and ready and able to save those who will come to him. But you will not escape the wrath of God if you are an enemy of God. Please know that. Please understand the truth of that. Now, your rejecting the son of God as the only savior does nothing to change the fact that God is going to judge the wicked. The Bible says this in Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So listen, those of us who are trying to share Christ with you, we're, we're not being mean. We're not being judgmental. We're not being hateful bigots, as many people say. No, we're actually trying to tell you how you can escape the fire of hell by coming to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Psalm 21, verse number 11 says this, For they intend evil against thee, talking about the enemies of God against God, they imagined a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. Now, listen, the Lord protected David from his enemies. They intended evil upon him. They imagined a mischievous device, but God did not allow them the ability to carry out that evil, to carry out that mischievous device. And praise God for his protecting power. Ain't that a great blessing? They, for they intended evil. Now listen, listen to me. Let's put this in a practical level for just a moment. Sinners shall not be permitted to do all that is in their power against the godly. Much less shall they be able to perform all that they wish against the godly. Now, many times you and I, and and I'll put me at the first, many times you and I are afraid to serve God in some kind of public ministry because of fear of the people. Oftentimes we are afraid to serve God in a certain place or a certain capacity because we are afraid of what people may say, think, or do. Amen. And it is possible that we could be harmed in some capacity. I understand that. But most of the time, it is only an attention, an intention by them, and they're not able to perform that which they would like to do because God prevents it. Ain't that a blessing? Now, listen, I, I need this verse. I, I needed this verse. This verse is helpful for me, for there are times that I am a little bit apprehensive to do the things that God would would have me to do or that God would have to be done or that God would want to be done in the service of the Lord. I need to be reminded that God is my protector. He is our protection. He is our salvation from our physical enemies. And David said, they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device, which they were not able to perform. I am thankful that God watches over his. Does that mean that you'll never be mocked, ridiculed, or even punished? Does that mean that you'll never suffer any harm at all? No, it does not. It simply means that God is able to provide, to protect, and to save, and he certainly is. Verse number 12 says this, Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back, when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. Now what an interesting verse. The Bible says that God's going to make, they've turned their back on God. God says here, he's going to, 
He's going to make them turn their back. And when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. And so what a, what a harsh thing. David's enemies were made to turn their backs and flee from his pursuing army. The evil that they had imagined against him was so, soon turned to regret. They realized that they had attacked the wrong man, not because David, not because of who David was, but because of who David's God was. And listen, the same is true for the enemies of God. When the wicked finally stand before God, they'll have no boldness to face him. The Bible says that every knee is going to be bowed and every tongue is going to confess. Uh, every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess that he is Lord of Lords. That he, I, I can't remember that past the scripture right now. It just slipped my mind. I knew it a second ago. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they're going to confess that he is Lord of Lords. That he is King of Kings. Amen. And so they're not going to stand before God and blaspheme and ridicule God at that time. They're going to confess that he is God. And they're going to wish that they knew God. The Bible says that they're going to be bound hand and foot and cast into outer darkness. What a horrible thing. Now, I wonder... I wonder if they're facing God. I, I believe they're going to face God face to face in judgment. I think the Bible teaches that. But then the Bible says here, therefore shall thou make them turn their back. I wonder if God, after they're being, or while even while they're being bound hand and foot, or after that they're bound hand and foot, that God is going to have them turned to where their backs is facing him. And uh, so now their backs is to him again. And they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. I say that because of this. When they had an opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, when they had an opportunity to believe on our great God and our Savior for salvation, they turned their back on Him. And now that they're desiring some deliverance from God, now that they're desiring some salvation from God, He's going to make them turn their backs to Him, showing that there is no forgiveness offered at this time. There is no grace anymore. There is no mercy now. You turned your back on me in defiance to me, and now I'm going to force you to turn your back on me because you didn't want my son who died for you. So you're going to be bound hand and foot, and you're going to be cast into the lake of fire for all eternity. And so we see here in this psalm, we see David's thanksgiving for past victories. We see David's expectation of future victories, and we too have an expectation of those future victories. And then in the final verse, we see praise for the victor. Look at verse 13, and we'll end here. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength, so will we sing and praise thy power. Now, I think it would be good for us, instead of doubting and complaining and winding, whining, that we would remember that our God is all-powerful. Though we are weak, He is strong. We should spend our energy singing and praising Him for all that He is able to do. As the Bible says here, Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength. Our strength is so weak and so limited. I'm reminded of a song that our children sing from our children's church. They often sing, they sing, My God is so great so strong and so mighty. There is nothing that my God cannot do for you. Ain't that a blessing? So here, here is God assisting and the king is trusting. God is saving and the king is rejoicing. The king is desiring and God is satisfying his desires to the full. And so practically you and I, here is God assisting. You and I as believers are trusting God is saving. You and I as believers are rejoicing. God is desiring, or, or we are desiring, and our great God is satisfying our desires to the full. What a great psalm. We need to put our faith and our trust and our dependence in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. For He is a Savior. He's the only Savior. And He is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I've gone over today. Our time is going, come and gone. Thank you so much for tuning in. May God bless you until we meet again is our prayer. Thank you so much, social media audience, for listening and watching. Thank you for liking and sharing. We sure do appreciate you guys. Good, goodbye and God bless you until we meet again is our prayer.